morning, Vineyard. How are you? Good to see your smiling faces. It's great to have you here. If you're joining us online, welcome. We're glad to have you as well as we go into week two of our series that we began last week on talking about stuff that matters to kids. So if you have kids, particularly kids at home, uh, I hope you're going to be taking notes and paying attention. But, you know, most of us have an opportunity to influence kids at some level. And so we, I think we can all grow and learn from this. And really, the truth is, the things that we learn and need to teach to kids are usually things we're still figuring out ourselves. We're kind of like big kids, right? We're like, yeah, I needed that lesson one more time. I need to, what does God have to say about something? So we're going to be looking at that, looking at what the Lord has to say about particularly areas of this, this area of friendship and relationships. You know, in our society, loneliness is at epidemic levels all throughout the United States. Over 50% of the people study show say regularly they feel lonely. They, you know, they feel lonely it's with kids, with teenagers, young adults, uh, married folks, not just single. I mean, married people often feel incredibly lonely, very isolated. And certainly as we age and we go into senior living and, uh, and elder, you know, as we get older, and friends start to die off, there can be an incredible amount of loneliness. It's not just our country, but in Britain, the studies show that 68% of people say that they suffer from loneliness. In fact, it's at such high levels that the prime minister, this is just two years ago, created a whole new cabinet called the minister, and, and hired a guy, the minister of loneliness. And he has a whole staff to try to help his country that are suffering from loneliness. Loneliness is a big deal. In fact, God has a lot to say about it. He says, it is not good for man to be alone. This is in Genesis. God created the universe, created the earth, he created animals, and he keeps saying, this is good, this is good, this is good. First time he ever says, God says something's not good, is when people are lonely. He says, that is not good. God hates loneliness. In fact, if you suffer from loneliness, that's not God's ideal. That's not God's best for you. That's not God's plan for you. He wants you to be connected in and fill that area in your life so that you're not so lonely. And so we need to grow in this area of, of having friends. Friends are actually good for us. They're, they're good for your uh, emotional health, your mental health, even your physical health. Studies show that the fewer friends you have, the more likely you'll die early. I mean, I, I don't know if you knew that, but so th it is very, very helpful to have uh, friends in and around our lives, but not all friends are equal, right? I think we all know that. Not all friends are, are equal. You have followers. We call them friends. You know, you can defriend somebody, but they're followers, and we get those just by playing our cards right on social media or, I mean, just, right, we get online and, you know, if you please the crowd, uh, people, you get more followers, you get more views, and, and, and it feels good when somebody comes up to you and go, you know what, I'm going to start following you. We go, oh, thank you so much. I mean, I mean, it's, there's like a dopamine rush, you know, in our brain, like, oh, I feel so good, I'm so bad. Of course, the opposite happens when they defriend us, right? They, I'm not following you anymore. No, please. I, you know, and then when we, up, when we take a photo, we're thinking, my followers will love this. Man, they'll wish they were me now. And we upload it. What do we do? Look back, right? How many people looked at it? How many hearts did we get? How many thumbs up? You know, and we're flipping through and evaluating it. And some people are late to the game. It takes them a few days to, to get on board and recognize how cool my, my, my video is or my photo or my post. And we're, and we're scrolling through that. But that's, if we play to the crowd, then... You know, we get more followers, but there's also friends, but they're not, they're like friends that kind of like got assigned to us, you know, you, they're like friends out of circumstance. In other words, you work with them. So, you, you know, might as well be friends with them, right? Or you go to school with them, or you sit in the bleachers while your kids play, you know, baseball or soccer or something. I mean, just the kind of life circumstances. You're online, you're playing a certain game and that their time is always, their time zone is always your time zone. 
just different things pull us together, but it's friends by circumstance. And then there's core friends, which is I, I call faves, right? It's our favorites, our faves. And they're by choice. And that's important that we think through our faves. Who's going to be my core friend, close to me? People that can really influence me because the truth is, the closer I am to a person, the greater they can influence my life, for good or for bad, for good or for bad. So, because people that are close to me can influence me more, then I need to be careful and choose my closest friends wisely. I need to choose them wisely. The Bible talks about how if we're going to follow the Lord, if we're going to live a a life that's God-honoring, we need to do that. See what it says here? Godly people are careful. Not perfect people, people, but people kind of, they're saying, I'm going to try to pursue the Lord in my life. You're careful about the friends you choose. You know, it's not hickety-pickety, just grab any friend because I'm lonely. No, you think through, I want this, I, I want these kinds of friends in my life. Now, we're in the world and people have, right, there's all kinds of people. We are to love people. Jesus loved everybody. We want to be like Jesus. Jesus loved everybody, but he didn't spend time equally with everybody. I mean, he fed 5,000 people and he did other, you know, you know, the Sermon on the Mount with all these people. But then he took 120 and trained them. And then he took 12 and he discipled them. And then he took three, Peter, James, and John, and he mentored them. So he gave different different experiences to different people. His closest group, Peter, James, Peter, James, and John, they were in the Garden of Gethsemane with him when he was praying and agonizing over that. He was, they were with him at the Mount of Transfiguration when the glory of the Lord showed up there. They were there when he healed Peter's mother-in-law. And only, the, I mean, did he play favorites? He did, right? He just played favorites. But later on, we see like in Galatians, it talks about those three, Peter, James, and Don, John, different James, but another person he invested into, they, they call them the pillars of the church. See, they had a disproportionate amount of responsibility that were going to be given to them. And so he gave them, you know, more focused attention. He brought them closer into his life. And so we need to do that as well. And you got to be careful about the people you let into your life. Now, if I were to ask one of you to come up here and grab my hand and, and say, okay, you try to pull me down and I'm going to try to pull you up. Who do you think would be more likely to win? Uh, I'll let you know right up front, I'm not that strong. So that, that, that might be helpful. But, but chances are you're going to win, right? Because it's easier. It's the law of gravity. You can pull me down. And that's true with friends. Friends can, it's much easier to pull somebody down than pull them up, which is why I don't believe in missionary dating. You know, when some girl will, Date a guy, well, I'm going to try to bring him to the Lord through our dating. Oh, I bet he's thinking that too, right? He's thinking, oh, hey, baby, you do what you want, you know. I'm, I'm all about something else, you know. Missionary dating, we're, we're, we're hoping. You know, it's easy to pull somebody down. It's easy to mess people, get, you know, when we're around the wrong people. Some friends may ruin you. How many people, how many people do you know that they got caught up with the wrong people, right? The wrong people. Well, it's not that they didn't, it's, it's that they let them in too close. You can't, you, you have to be careful and you have to be choosy who you let in real close. Now, the Bible has a number of things that are good cautions that we should apply when we're choosing friends, but we don't have time to go over all those. And so I'm going to just cover the four big ones, four of the, so, some of the big ones, but they're not the only ones. I don't want to just hang out here because I want to talk about something a little more positive. But, on you know, the negative part is be careful about people. They love to argue. They love to argue. You know, there's some people, that's their thing, right? They love poking the bear, stirring the pot, you know, you know, poking the beehive or whatever you call it. They're energized when they can get uh, an argument going and they stir it up. They agitate people. They're looking for conflict. The Bible says any fool can start arguments. But the honorable thing to do is to Stay out of them. That's a lot harder to do. It's, it's easy to just get into an argument. You've got to be careful. Some people, that's their thing, though. They love to argue. Another group is, is they love to gossip. They're just always talking about other people. 
And, he, and you know, I mean, some of these people, they're just, you know you share your stuff, it's going out, right? That's just, that's just the way it is. But some people, they're always talking. Now, now, now some of you, you think, well, wait a minute, that's most of my friends. Uh-oh, what am I going to do? Well, that's a problem. You, maybe you should consider changing out some of your friends if they're, if they're all doing, go- what is gossip anyway? So, well, let's get on the same page. Sharing s- damaging information when you're neither part of the problem nor part of the solution. It doesn't make somebody look good. It makes them look bad. And you're not part of the problem or the solution. You know, if I took a photo of you, if I went to your house, let's say early in the morning, you're not a morning person. I rap on the door real hard. You open it up. You know, you, you just got out of bed. Your hair is all, you know, you know. You know, you look, you look, you don't look good. Yeah, right? let's. And I take a picture, and I and then I post it. Hey, everybody wants to see what this person looks like. Is that really you? Yeah. Is it? Is it the way you really look? No, not generally, right? You could look that way, but when we do in life, life's like that. Sometimes we do things that are stupid. We don't look too good, but we don't really want a photo being passed around about that, right? That's what gossip is. Hey, look at this horrible photo of the person I have on this person and it's a part of their life that instead of covering them and you know we're exploiting it and so we need to be careful and by the way in the church sometimes that can happen through prayer requests you know oh yeah uh, you might want to pray for so and so why well it's not a prayer request it's it's a little cloak you know it's like a little dressing to make it look like it's it's not gossip anymore but it is stay away from gossips they can't keep a secret and they tell everything right we know people like that people who flatter others you know when you give false praise insincere compliments you uh talk up to your boss but behind his back you stab him in the back you kiss up to some popular person at school happens all the time but the bible says Flattery is a trap. In fact, evil people get caught in it, but good people avoid it and are free. So he's saying we can all get sucked into that if we're not careful, but you need to be careful. Don't get caught up. And in fact, when we flatter somebody in sincere praise, we don't really believe that about him. The Bible says that's actually like a curse. It's actually kind of, you know, just giving them hate. It says, they're friendly to my face, but they curse me in their hearts. And they're really just telling lies about me for being friendly and kind. In other words, what you say about them in their face, you're, you're kind and friendly, but you're really just mean and, and, and you're, just, you're just giving me hate. And so the Bible says, be careful. Don't, don't become that kind of person where you're always flattering people. And then uh, the people who can't control their temper. So not only do we not want to do these but be careful who you allow into your life because those things, next thing you know, can be you start to behave like that. You know, they, those, those behaviors rub off on you. People that are, you know, hot-tempered, short-fused, volatile, rash, they get upset easily, and sometimes they explode, but some people just become passive-aggressive, right? They're just kind of like they throw a pity party. There's different ways of showing the temper, but it says don't make friends with a hot-tempered person. Don't associate with anyone easily angered or you'll learn to be like them and not able to change. So it actually affects us. We start to become like those people. So let me look at the, uh, some, some, when we're looking at having friends close to us, qualities to look for in a healthy relationship. Not all of us were raised in healthy, functional environments, so maybe we don't know. So here's, here's things that you'd want in, your, in that relationship. You want people that can support you and encourage you spiritually. People that build you up, speak words of life into your life. Uh, you know, not not some people. There's they struggle with that. They're just challenged finding anything positive to help to help with anybody. But you, but life's too hard. You need people that will encourage you, encourage one another, and build each other up. That word encourage actually means to fill the heart, fill up the heart. When your heart is full. You know, when you talk to somebody on the phone or you go have lunch with them and you walk away after that, you're in the car, you put the phone down and you think, and if that, and if your thoughts think, wow, that was energizing. Well, that felt so good. Oh, that was, those were life-giving words. 
I'm so glad I talked to that person. Those are good signs that that person is encouraging you and helping you and lifting you up. We need people like that. Then two, friends who help me emotionally. They give me emotional support. Again, life is difficult. And so you, that's not the time to be looking for a friend when you're in a tough place. You know, when you're in a difficult place, this, 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 is, uh, this month is, you know, Mental Health Awareness Month, right? And as, as we, you know, it's not the time to be looking. We build that into our lives so people can support me emotionally. It says a friend loves you all the time, all the time. Through the, not just when you're doing great. The problem is actually when you're doing great, everything's, it's hard to even know sometimes who's your real friend is, is when you're in a difficult place. There's an old saying that, a true friend walks in when everybody else is walking out. That's one of the ways to know, hey, this person's legit. They're a true friend. They're walking in my life. Walking in, I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm here not just for you, but I'm here with you. Both are good, but when you say I'm here for you, it's now the impetus is on them to reach out to you. When you say I'm here with you, it means I'm going through this with you. You're not in this on your own. I'm going to be there to listen. I'm going to be there to serve any way I can to help you. And then choose friends who challenge me to think. This actually is the hardest one of the three, I think, for most of us. Because we tend to want to be around people that think just like us. Why? Because what we, you know, we, think, we think we've got it all together, right? Well, you know, I mean, I've got it all together. What, I'm, what I think is really the way it is. And the quicker you get on board, you know, the better for you. But it's hard to be around people that think differently than us. Their culture is different. Their political views are different. Their, their, uh, maybe some of their, their doctrine is different. I mean, there's just, the Bible talks about iron sharpens iron. When we're around people that are different, it helps us out. That's one of the challenges we've had with Vineyard Church for, since 2004. We, we, God told us he want this church, Vineyard Church, to be a multi-ethnic, multicultural church, which means we have to have this umbrella of grace and understanding. It, well, listen, when you have a multi, when you have people that don't think the same, you're going to step on each other's toes all the time. And so, if you've got a chip on your shoulder, or you're, you know, when, when you're you're always into correcting people and you use, you know, judgmental language, it just it just doesn't doesn't work well. And so, what we've learned is that as we grow together, we learn to expand the way we look at life and think about things. We need to give lots of grace, lots of patience with people that, that can offend us and hurt us. It's not that we ignore it, but we're, 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 we're very, very grace-filled here at, at Vineyard Church because we want to grow. We don't want to just be in our own little bubble, but we know that it's challenging when you let people in that think differently than you. The Bible says this, become wise by walking with the wise. If you hang out with fools, you know, your life's going to fall to fall apart. It'll fall into pieces, right? Have you ever seen that movie, uh, Dumb and Dumber? Right? Two guys that they think actually real similar, right? That's funny for a movie. It's good for a movie, bad for relationships. We want to expand the way we think. I want you to hear a story of a young lady in our church, actually you just heard from her, Bernicia Jones, and about how she grew in a relationship over the last couple of years here at Vineyard. Would you give her a warm welcome? Good morning. As Pastor Andy said, I'm Bernicia. Um, and I have a wonderful story of friendship um, for you. When I was growing up, I had a couple of close friends, but as I got into college and through my young adult years, I was always in surface level friendships that would crumble very quickly. And so when I came to Vineyard, I was craving real friendship, but that meant I needed to be vulnerable and I was not ready for that just yet. So when I got plugged into leading here in the youth ministry, to my my surprise when I met a young lady with a personality as strong as mine my defenses immediately went up okay it was like full pride you know I really didn't want to accept her for who she was but the Lord put us together and we began to lead a small group of, of, for high school girls together and 
she knew that I was struggling to really submit to her leadership style at times, but she continued to show me kindness. Now, I battled for months, actually, until one Wednesday night, something changed. We were having a conversation, and she said, you know, I know that we're very different, but that's what makes us a good team because we both have things that we can learn from one another as leaders that are going to make us stronger in the Lord. And my heart melted. <laughs> and from that moment on, I really began to trust her and we built a great friendship. Now, 2020 brought a lot of trials to my friend's life and it was difficult to hear the stories that she was telling me, but the Lord um, told me to just stick through beside her and to pray for her and to listen to her. And that's what I did. And in turn in 2021, when uh, I started to transition in life, she was there for me. And we laughed and we cried. And the Lord really helped us to find a deep relationship as sisters in Christ. And it reminded me of Proverbs 17, 17, as Pastor Andy said, where a brother loves at all times. I mean, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Um, and that just told me, you know, God was letting me know that godly friendships are going to be hard, okay, but they are definitely worth building because when you have a friend who loves the Lord, they can always lead you back to Jesus and his purpose and in times of troubles. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Well, we looked at some relationships that we want to avoid as far as our closest friendships. I mean, certainly they can be friends, just not our faves. And then we looked at what it means to have a good relationship, three important elements. Now I want to just do three more building blocks. There's something we bring to the table in having a good friendship. And number one is it's to be cheerful. You know, we get to choose every day whether we're going to be cheerful or not. That's a choice we get to make. And there's a lot of power, enormous power that happens just when you walk into a room there can be all kind of tension. You walk in and you're cheerful. It just kind of breaks all that tension. All of a sudden, it changes everybody's demeanor. That's true with a smile, too. When you smile, it just it communicates something. When a smile helps people be, be disarmed, to relax, to start to uh, see things differently. A smile, I love a smile because it's free, right? It doesn't cost anything. You know, it only takes seven muscles, facial muscles, to smile. It takes 42 to frown. It means that you're wasting energy when you frown. <laughs> if, you, if you're tired, smile and watch how much energy you get back. And one of the things about a smile is it's universal, right? And it's language. Everybody understands a smile, even if you don't speak the same language. It's kind of like the universal finger of disapproval. Everybody knows what that is, right? <laughs> but this is better than that, right? This is a smile. When you smile... It changes things. In fact, you know, studies show, this is true, studies show that you look cuter when you smile. Turns out you don't have to try to lose weight after all, right? <laughs> all you have to do is smile, and, you're, and, and studies show you're more attractive. <laughs> See? <laughs> that's more of a grin. I guess that's not really a smile, but I need all the help I can get. <laughs> when you smile, it changes things. All of a sudden, you start to change the, the atmosphere it says, a cheerful look that's on your face brings joy to the heart. We tend to think the reverse, right? Oh, yeah, if I'm happy in my heart, it will show on my face. But the Bible says we actually, it starts with our face. A cheerful look, a smile. Sometimes I'll be coming to church, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to go today. Have you ever felt that way? You probably don't want your pastor admitting that, right? But, <laughs> but it's true, right? I mean, I think we all get in those, those funks. But then I look in the mirror, start smiling, thinking, yeah, okay, I guess I'll go. You know, I have something to share, something to give. I really don't have a lot to give when I'm a sourpuss. In fact, I think, you know, Christians that are always long in the face, always sad, always, you know, look like they were baptized in vinegar or something. I mean, that's just, that's not, I don't think that gives God very good testimony, right? One of our values here, we have four core values, love God, love people, pursue excellence, and then another core value is choose joy. We say it that way because it's a decision that you make every single day. Recently, we asked some of our people that are good at smiling here at Vineyard, 
uh, we, we, well, we, we've had them smile for us in some different videos, so I asked our videographer, hey, why don't you pull some of those together and let's put together a little video. Watch this. It's real short. Thanks for joining us. I want to thank you for joining us today. We're glad you could join us today. For joining us. We're so glad. Thank you so much for joining us today. For joining us today. today. Thanks for joining us today. 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 We're so glad you're here. Every day you can choose. Every day you can choose to smile, to choose joy, not just with your face, but with your words. The Bible says the Lord is pleased with friendly words. It's powerful when you share a kind word. It can lift somebody's spirit up, right? And the Bible says when you do that, when you share, when you're with your words, when you're friendly, what God says what? He goes, he's pleased. He's pleased. It's like the guy, he was, you know, cantankerous. He goes into the florist and he goes, hey, I'm so upset. I have a friend, a neighbor, he moved in, and, and so I, I had you send some flowers, and you sent the wrong flowers. The flowers you sent him says, rest in peace. And, uh, and the florist said, well, you think you've got a, prob- a problem. What about the guy at the funeral? His says, good luck in a new location. <laughs> so, other people have it worse than you is the point of that, right? So you get to choose to be cheerful. Number two, be conversational. Be conversational. In other words, learn to ask questions. If you're always doing the talking, that's a monologue. That's not a conversation. You, 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 what we need to do is just ask questions. Learn Because people, everybody, it, every single person who, who's right here and online, you know things I don't know. I can learn from you if I'm willing to ask questions and, and grow in that area. I'll, sometimes I'll go to um, uh, like some kind of banquet dinner, meet some people, or on a plane. I'm sitting there, and, and, and I'll just ask people questions. I will do almost zero talking. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, just ask questions. And at the end, it always happens. You can try it. It always happens. They'll say, you're such a great conversationalist. I think I, I only asked some questions. You're the one who did all the talking. But that's the way a good conversation happens. When we restrain ourselves, we learn to ask questions. We learn a lot about somebody. Don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others. If you want to have friends, it's not about being interesting. It's about being interested. Being interesting is what most people focus on. Oh, I want to dress cool, look cool, smell cool. You know, I got I, I to gotta have cool stories to share. It's all about me being interesting. But that's actually not the, the, the recipe for a good relationship. It's about being interested in others. How are you doing? Let me hear about your day. Let me hear about what's going on in your life. And by asking good questions. I love this verse about asking questions. A person's thoughts are like water in a deep well. Some of you know, some of you are married to something like that. Their, their thoughts are in a deep well. Hey, what's going on in there? But somebody with insight can draw them out. Good questions. Some of you should, you might want to have a list of questions that you have in your phone. And when that opportunity comes up, you can just glance over them real quick, and then you ask some good questions that help draw that out. Being conversational, being cheerful, but also being considerate. In other words, learning to listen, not just hear. You know, we all know what it is to hear, something you don't really care about. Somebody's talking, they're droning on like your high school math teacher or something. Oh, my goodness, I don't care about this. But you have to hear it, right? As opposed to listening where you're really dialing in. I care about what's happening right now. Let everyone be quick to listen and slow to speak. Instead of the opposite, what we usually do. Normally, we're quick to speak, slow to listen. He goes, no, actually, quick to listen. Everybody in the world is waiting to be listened to. If you learn to listen, you'll never be wanting for friends and good friends, friends in your life. You see, the most important thing you can give somebody is your time. The most important thing I can give is somebody is my time and my attention. You can always get more money. You can't get more time. And so when you give people your time and your attention, you're giving them your life. That's why when you waste time, it's, it's a form of, of suicide, really. You're wasting your life that you can never get back. It's one of the reasons I work hard on these messages. Because... To me, if I waste one minute and there's, you know, 300 people here, that's 300 
minutes wasted. If I waste an hour, that's 300 hours wasted. Your time is valuable. And when you give your time and your attention to somebody, you're, you're speaking with something that has incredible value. You're saying you're important to me. Look at this verse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Now, it's one thing to have sympathy for somebody. I'm sorry you're going through that. That sucks. There's another thing to have empathy. And this is what the Bible here is talking about. Weep with us. In other words, not just am I sorry to hear you're going through that. I am, I'm experiencing that. I'm, I'm in pain with you. I, I, feel, I feel sick to my stomach. I, I, I feel bad. I'm, I'm crying along with you. See, that's, that's a new level. It's one of the things that, why I love small groups so much. Small groups is where we learn because you can have sympathy from somebody from afar, but when you get to know them, that's where you enter into empathy. You say, I actually, am, I'm not just sorry that's happening, but I feel pain for you. You know, there's another level beyond that. Jesus talked about having compassion. Compassion is you'll do anything to stop the pain in their life. You'll do anything, It'll, even if it's inconvenient. Jesus, it says all the time in the, in the Gospels, Jesus saw them and their pain and their distress, and it says he had compassion on them. And then he would reach out and he would heal them and, and, and bring some kind of physical comfort to them or emotional comfort, did all kinds of things. But the Bible constantly says he showed compassion, he had compassion on them. In fact, that's what brought him to the cross. Jesus was, was, was knew that the pain that we had not being close to God, that all of humanity was separate. God was perfect. We're all sinful people. We're far from God. And Jesus was moved with compassion, and he goes to the cross for us. It's a powerful, powerful thing to demonstrate. Hey, I care about you. Now, I want to close this message by just giving you a couple things that you should pray about. A couple things I'm going to invite you to pray about. Number one, okay, is if you're a parent... And you're raising kids, and they're still at home, particularly if they're young. The way you help them in their relationships is you need to model that and give them opportunities to do that. They're not going to learn how to have good friendships at school. They're not going to learn how to have good friendships on, on social media or on TV. You need to teach it to them. You need to. It's part of the, what you do as a parent. Otherwise, they'll end up getting out of the home and they'll struggle with loneliness and struggle with friendships that are meaningful and they won't know why. And I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying, as a parent, you need to do that as part of your responsibility to help them. So I want to suggest something to you. Here's what I'm going to suggest. That you do family dinners. Do family dinners. Now, I know that's gone the way of the dodo bird, you know, like, oh, who does that anymore? It has great value. You sit around, you learn to listen, you learn to care about people, you learn to have adult conversations, you learn to ask questions. This is a great way to help your kids learn these vital, important things about, about having friendships, having meaningful, healthy friendships that build you up spiritually, support you emotionally, help you to think. Secondly, Secondly, this applies to every single person here. If you want to grow in friendships and let God really work that in your life, the next thing is join a small group. Now, this is, the, this is our summer launch of small groups this weekend, today. And so you go on our website, vineyardchurch.com, look at some of the small groups. You go, Andy, I'm not going to be out of town a few weeks this, this summer. Well, that's why we shorten it. Half the, our semester in the summer is half the length it normally is. And we know people are going to be in and out. That's part of it. But it doesn't stop you from taking that step. So remember what I asked you to do. Would you, instead of just checking out and saying, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not. You know, I know most of you are in a small group. We have almost 60% of our church in small groups. But for the other group, you're not in a small group yet. Would you pray about it, right? Would you at least say, okay, I'll pray about it. Because I know you're, you've already voted with your feet. You've already said no. So I get it, okay? I, I, I heard you. you. You're not interested. I'm asking, would you pray about it? Would you take that step and say, at least I'll pray about it? And then I'm happy. If it's between you and God, do what Jesus, do what God tells you to do. If you're doing what God tells you to do, that's all I, that's all I want. 
right? And then it's a big win. Let's pray right now. Would you bow your heads and pray? With every head bowed, every eye closed, just let's take a moment and, and just come before the Lord. Let me ask you, would you kind of do a little bit of soul searching right now? Ask yourself, are my friends helping or hindering my spiritual growth? Are my friends helping or hindering my spiritual growth? Are you dating the wrong person? You know they're not going to help advance your spiritual growth. They're not on that same, that same trajectory. You've allowed yourself maybe to get caught up with them relationally or emotionally, sexually, all kinds of ways. But listen, God wants something great for you to have. You need the people closest to you to be people that build you up, encourage you, further your growth. You say, God, help me to be more cheerful. Help me to learn to ask questions and be a better listener. Help me to do my part in being a friend to others. You know, in John 15, 15, the gospel of John, Jesus said to you, he said, this is a word he gave, and, we're, and it's recorded in Scripture. Jesus said, I've called you my friends. Now that's an invitation. Jesus says, I want to be your friend. Jesus says, I have accepted you. The question is, have you accepted God? How do you, you know, a friend, it's two, it's two parts, right? Both people need to come together. Jesus has already put it out to Olive Branch that I want to be your friend. It's your opportunity, your moment to come to God and say, I want, you know, down deep, you're not following. Some of you are not close to God. Why let it stay like that? Jesus says, I want to be your friend. I want you to be close to God. I want, I want to be able to pour my, have a great experience with you in, during this life, help you to fulfill your purpose. Some of you know God's, it's, there's something resonating in your heart. And this is your moment. So I'm going to ask you to pray with me. I want to lead you in a prayer. Because maybe you're not sure what to pray. So I want to lead you in a prayer to say, God, I'm ready to be your friend. I Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for me. This isn't about joining Vineyard Church. This is about you getting right with God, saying, I, I want to be your friend. I'm not going to have my fist up anymore. I'm not going to make a bunch of excuses. This is my moment. And if that's you... I'm not going to ask you to come forward or stand up, but I am going to ask you to let me know. Say, I want to pray with you, Pastor Andy. I want, to, I want to pray. You can lead me in a prayer right now. If that's you, with every head bowed, every eye closed, then I'm just going to ask you boldly right now, put, just put your hand up. Say, I'll include me in that prayer. Bless you. Somebody else? I see you in the back. Yep. Who else? Several of you all up front. Yep. All, all, hands everywhere. Just, okay. Anybody else? This is... Okay, I see you. Put your hand down. Everybody, you know who you were. Pray this prayer. Say, God, today's my day. Right where you're at, you can think that, whisper, whatever you want. Just say, God, today's my day to get spiritually right with you. You say, God, forgive me for every time I resisted you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for accepting me just as I am. I don't have to be perfect. Would you say, God, teach me what it means to be your friend. Teach me what it means to reflect the friendship I have with you with other people. The patience, the kindness, the joy. Help me, God. You say, Last one, say, God, today I come home. Today I want, to, I want to be part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Would you just kind of give them a warm welcome? Say, hey, we're praying for you. We care about you.
I personally want to pray for you. If you raised your hand, you said, Andy, I want to pray with you, you know, pray with you, let me know about it. Uh, the way you can do that is the connect card that's attached to your program right on there. Andy, I prayed with you. Any other prayer requests you have, let me know. We'd love to pray for you on the way out. You can write, you can drop those prayer requests in the box on the, uh, as, as you're leaving. Of course, if you're online, there's a way that's being provided for you right now that you can let us know about how we can pray for you and support you. Well, uh, remember, this is small group weekend. We're hoping you will jump in. There's no better time to join a small group when they're all starting. That's why we do these semesters. It's kind of like musical chairs. Everything gets shifted around, and when you join a group, it's new, and everybody there is new. So that's it's. Who, there's nothing worse than joining a group, and they've been meeting for years, right? And they have shared history together. So we don't do that here. So we hope that you'll get involved in a small group. If you love our vision, if you're new with us, feel don't feel pressure to give. But if you love what we're doing here, helping people to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference, that's our vision. Then you can help contribute and further our vision through giving towards vineyard at vineyardchurch.com. That's our website. It's a place for you to give there. You can text it, 45777, then VCC in the amount, other ways to give as well. Thank you so much. Would you stand with me? We're going to go ahead and transition to a final song. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for being our friend. You are good. Lord, you just demonstrate time and time again, even when we fall, even when we make mistakes, you help us get back up again. You dust us off. You shower us with grace. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. We get to walk and celebrate with you. Lord, do more of all that in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together.